Hi, I'm Maria, and lately, my life has felt like a roller coaster. Honestly, I never thought I would share all of this, but life has a funny way of surprising you when you least expect it. I'm 31 years old, and I work as a marketing executive. Up until recently, I thought I had everything figured out. Just over a year ago, I married Paul, my college sweetheart. We were so happy. It felt like we were on top of the world. Not long after we got married, we received some incredible news. I found out I was pregnant. It was our little secret, and we were beyond excited. One evening, I couldn't contain my excitement any longer. I turned to Paul and said, Can you believe it? We're going to be parents. My voice was full of joy, and Paul pulled me into a big hug, his eyes shining. I know, Maria. It's amazing, he said with a smile. But remember, we should keep it quiet until after the first trimester. He was always so calm and thoughtful, reminding me to be cautious. I agreed, but keeping this secret turned out to be harder than I thought, especially around Paul's family. Paul's family is a story of its own. His mother, Janet, is a nice person, but she can be a bit much. She still treats Paul like a little boy, constantly giving him advice and attention. Then there's Paul's dad, Jason, who is usually quiet and stays out of family matters. Paul also has two siblings. His sister, Emma, seems to think of me as competition. She often gives me these looks, as if I've taken something from her. And Paul's brother, Jacob, barely speaks to me, as if I'm invisible. Family gatherings are, to put it mildly, challenging. Take last Wednesday's lunch, for example. Paul and I were getting ready when Janet noticed a wrinkle on his shirt. Paul, honey, your shirt is wrinkled. Maria, don't you know how to use an iron? She asked, her tone sharp. I felt a wave of irritation, but managed to stay calm. I'll double check next time, Janet, I replied with a forced smile. I tried to stay polite, but it wasn't easy. As if that wasn't enough, Emma chimed in. Oh, Maria, don't worry. Not everyone is meant to be a homemaker, she said with a smirk. I could feel my blood pressure rising, but I refused to let them see how much their words bothered me. Later that evening, I called my best friend, Angela, to vent. If Janet makes one more snide comment about my housekeeping, I'm going to lose it, I groaned. Angela laughed on the other end of the phone. Girl, you married Paul, not his mother. Just tell her to back off, she said, trying to cheer me up. I wish it were that simple, I sighed. Paul hates conflict, and I don't want to make things worse. But it's so hard sometimes. Despite everything, I knew I loved Paul, and I wanted to make things work. But between being a wife, a soon-to-be mom, and dealing with Paul's family, I felt like I was drowning under everyone's expectations. Angela always knew how to be the voice of reason. Maria, you need to stand up for yourself, especially now that you're having a baby, she told me. I knew she was right, but the thought of speaking up made me feel sick. Of course, it could have been the morning sickness, too. As the weeks went by, it became harder and harder to keep the pregnancy a secret. One night, Paul and I were lying in bed, and he looked at me, his eyes filled with both excitement and nerves. Maria, I think it's time. Let's tell them about the baby at the family dinner next week, he said, his eyes searching mine. I hesitated. Part of me wanted to keep our happy news just between us, safe from Janet's judgment and Emma's jealousy but I knew we couldn't hide it forever. Okay, I said, trying to sound confident. Let's do it. But even as I said it, I couldn't shake the feeling that this announcement would change everything. Little did I know how right I was, or just how wrong things would go. The day of the family dinner finally arrived, and I was a nervous wreck. I spent hours cooking, hoping to impress Janet, though I knew that was probably a dream. Sure enough, as soon as we sat down, Janet had something to say. Maria, dear, the roast is a bit dry. Did you forget to baste it? She asked, her voice sugary but sharp. I forced a smile. I'll keep that in mind for next time, I said, swallowing my frustration. Then, as if that wasn't enough, she added, And that dress, is it new? It looks a bit tight, don't you think? Her eyes drifted down to my waist and I felt my face heat up. Just then, 
Paul cleared his throat. Actually, Mom, we have some news, he said. My heart pounded as he glanced at me for support. Maria and I were having a baby. There was a brief silence, and then everyone reacted at once. Jason, Paul's dad, smiled, which was rare, and Jacob mumbled a quick congratulations. Emma, on the other hand, looked like she had swallowed something sour. But Janet's reaction was the one that took my breath away. Are you sure, Paul? How do you know she's not making it up? Janet said, her tone icy. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Excuse me? I managed to say, my voice shaking. It's just convenient timing, isn't it? Janet continued, right as Paul's career is taking off. Paul looked genuinely confused. What are you talking about, Mom? Emma jumped in eagerly. Remember when Maria was so adamant about birth control? Funny how that changed, she said with a smug look. I felt their accusations crush me and I couldn't hold back anymore. That was over a year ago, I protested. We decided together that we were ready for a family. But the happy moment was gone. Paul looked uncertain, doubt creeping into his expression. Janet suddenly stood up, her chair scraping loudly. If you're really pregnant, prove it, she said, her words cutting through what should have been a joyful announcement. I was left standing there, feeling more alone than ever. You want me to prove I'm pregnant? I repeated, my voice trembling with shock and anger. You want me to take a test right here? Janet narrowed her eyes. Don't be crude, Maria. A proper blood test would be fine, she replied coldly. I turned to Paul, hoping he'd step in, defend me, and tell his mother to stop. But instead, he looked torn, glancing back and forth between Janet and me. After a long pause, he said softly, Maybe it's not such a bad idea, Maria, just to settle everyone's doubts. My heart dropped. How could he even consider this? How could he take their side instead of mine? This is crazy. I'm leaving, I said, feeling a mix of frustration and sadness. I turned to go, but before I could make it to the door, Janet stepped in front of me, blocking my way. If you walk out that door, we'll all know you're lying, she said, her voice sharp and accusing. Get out of my way, Janet, I said, my voice rising. But suddenly, everything changed. It all happened so quickly, yet in slow motion. Janet's hand shot out, pushing me backward. I stumbled, desperately trying to catch my balance. I saw Jacob reaching out to grab my arm, but he was too late. I tumbled down the stairs, my world spinning before everything went dark. When I opened my eyes, tears rolled down my face as I replayed what had just happened. Janet's cold expression, Emma's smug face, Paul's hesitation, and Jacob's failed attempt to catch me. It all swirled in my mind filling me with a sense of betrayal I had never felt before. As the ambulance rushed me to the hospital, one question filled my mind. Was my baby okay? And even if everything was fine, could I ever trust my husband or his family again? When the ambulance reached the hospital, I was taken straight to the emergency room. Doctors and nurses were all around me, speaking quickly in medical terms I couldn't understand. The only thing I cared about was whether my baby was safe. I felt terrified and helpless, hoping for good news. Hours later, I woke up to the steady beeping of hospital monitors. A doctor stood beside my bed, smiling gently. Mrs. Thompson, you're awake. I have good news. Your baby is safe. You're both going to be okay, he said. A wave of relief washed over me, but it was quickly replaced by anger as I remembered why I was there. This was supposed to be a joyful time in our lives a celebration of our growing family. Instead, I had been forced to defend myself against accusations from the very people who were supposed to be my family. I glanced over and saw Paul standing by my bedside, his face pale and filled with regret. Maria, I'm so sorry, he whispered. But his words felt hollow. How could he apologize now, after allowing his family to doubt me, after standing by while I was hurt? I turned away, realizing that things would never be the same. In that moment, I knew I'd have to make some tough decisions about who I could really trust and what kind of life I wanted for myself and my child. This wasn't just about my baby's safety. It was about protecting our future. I don't know what happened, Paul began, but I cut him off. 
anger bubbling up. What happened? Your mother pushed me down the stairs. That's what happened. He flinched. Mom says it was an accident. She was just trying to stop you from leaving. Before I could respond, my best friend Angela rushed into the room. Maria, oh my God, are you okay? She turned to Paul, her eyes full of fire. And you, how could you let this happen? It wasn't, I didn't, Paul stammered, but Angela wasn't having it. Save it, she snapped, silencing him. She turned back to me, her voice soft now. I'm here, Maria, whatever you need. Paul looked at me, then stepped out of the room to get some air. As soon as he left, I filled Angela in on everything that had happened. Her face grew darker with each word. We're not letting them get away with this, she said firmly. Just then we heard voices in the hallway. Janet and Emma were talking. We just need to convince Paul it was an accident, Janet was saying. Maria's always been clumsy, probably faking this whole pregnancy anyway. Angela's eyes widened, and without a word, she pulled out her phone and started recording their conversation. As their voices faded down the hallway, I felt a new resolve inside me. Enough was enough. Angela, I need your help. We're going to fight back, I said, feeling stronger with each word. Over the next few hours, we made a plan. Angela managed to get a nurse to give us copies of my medical records, which showed clear evidence of my pregnancy and injuries consistent with being pushed. We should get statements from the hospital staff too, Angela suggested. They can confirm your condition when you arrived. I nodded, but hesitated. What about Paul? He's been texting me, full of doubts, clearly still believing his mother. Forward them to me. It's all evidence, Maria, Angela said, her eyes determined as she gathered everything we needed. I took a deep breath and made a call I never thought I'd have to make. Hello, is this the office of Carol Baker? I need to speak with her about a domestic abuse case. Meanwhile, Angela returned, looking triumphant. Got it all. Medical records, staff statements, and that lovely recording of Janet and Emma plotting. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of everything settle around me. Angela, I've made a decision. I'm leaving, Paul. Her eyes softened, filled with both understanding and sadness. Are you sure? I have to. For my baby's sake and my own, I replied firmly. Just then, Paul walked back into the room, looking conflicted. Maria, can we talk? Mom wants to come and apologize, he said, looking at me with pleading eyes. No, Paul, we can't, I said, cutting him off. And she can't. I'm done. His face fell, clearly not expecting this. What do you mean? I mean I'm leaving, I said, my voice steady. I watched the shock spread across his face, but I didn't feel any doubt. I had to protect myself and my baby, and that meant leaving behind anyone who didn't have my back. I can't be part of this family anymore, Paul. It's not safe for me or our child, I said, my voice firm but filled with sadness. Maria, please, we can work this out, Paul pleaded, looking desperate. Angela stepped in, her voice steady and strong. She said her peace, Paul. Respect that. Paul looked at both of us, stunned, then slowly left the room, looking like he'd been hit by a wave. As the door closed behind him, I felt a mix of emotions, sadness for the life I had imagined, but also relief. I knew this wouldn't be easy, but for the first time in days, I felt a flicker of hope. I turned to Angela, taking a deep breath. What now? She gave me a determined smile. Now, we get somewhere safe. Then we make sure they face the consequences.